We recently released a video on how to dodge tax legally, which proved to be extremely popular. And we also get regularly asked about investment taxes and how an ISA protects your money. What has been evident is that a lot of people are unclear about all the different ways investments are taxed and how to avoid what many people consider to be an unfair tax. Many people feel aggrieved that they were taxed the first time around when they had to work their ass off to earn this money and now it's been taxed again when it's invested. Taxes are boring. But with investing getting easier and easier and more accessible, then it's worth spending a little bit of time working out just exactly how the government is putting their hand in your pocket. If you follow our investment strategy of building a simple but well diversified portfolio with low fees and invested for the long term, all while being done in a tax efficient manner, then we would fully expect you to live a far more prosperous and happy life. We really do believe that if you control your money, you control your life. Average people are out of control. As we stated in that previous video, which got some of the left-wing nutjobs quite angry, was that we believe it is your duty to pay less tax. Only the strong can help the weak. If you are in a better financial position yourself, you will be in a far better position to help others. And helping others is one of the most fulfilling things that you can do. But doing this successfully can only be done from a position of strength. Despite the unwarranted bad rep that wealthy people get, they are the biggest donators of money to charitable causes. If we paraphrase what one millionaire said, it is selfish being poor. When I was poor, I helped no one. Now that I'm rich, I help thousands of people. If you think about it, what instructions do you get from the cabin crew on a plane? Always put on your own oxygen mask first before helping other people. In this video, we're gonna talk about everything to do with investment taxes, including dividend tax, capital gains tax, tax on interest, stamp duty, withholding taxes, allowances, ICEs and more. Let's check it out. Welcome to MillionChapter.com, the investment and finance channel that sets you and your finances free. I'm Andy, this is Ben, and if you like what we say, hit the like button and click subscribe. Don't forget to check out the MillionChapter.com office page, where we have hundreds of pounds of cash bonuses that you can snap up when you sign up to any of the investment and peer-to-peer -peer lending platforms listed. We'll put the link to this office page in the description below, so be sure to check that out. Let's get into the video. Individual savings accounts. ISA. Let's start off with the granddaddy of them all, the ISA. If you want total simplicity and almost full protection from tax, then the ISA is the way to go. And that's true no matter what ISA type you use, stocks and shares ISA, cash ISA, lifetime ISA, innovative finance ISA and junior ISA. Outside of an ISA, you may have to pay tax on your investment returns and there is a big emphasis on the word may as you do get generous allowances, which we'll get to shortly. More specifically, with an ISA, you will not have to pay any tax on dividends, capital gains or interest, which is awesome. Don't underestimate what effect this can have with your investments able to grow and compound without being hindered by tax. Even with the use of an ISA, you will still have to pay stamp duty tax on UK shares and dividend withholding tax on many international shares, including those from the US. A common question that we get asked is, will I get taxed if I withdraw money from an ISA? The answer is no, but you may get taxed on future investment earnings if you were to invest that money outside of an ISA. We know this is a confusing concept for some, so to avoid any confusion, you won't get taxed on anything you withdraw from an ISA. But as with all money outside of an ISA, it may become liable for tax if you were to make any investment gain outside of the protection of an ISA. Whatever you withdraw from an ISA does not count towards your annual income because it's already been taxed on the way in. By this, we mean it was taxed when you earned it during the year. ISAs are an incredible wealth building tool, but they're not always necessary unless you have already built up a respectable investment pot. For example, some investment platforms might charge you extra for the use of an ISA, or some banks might give you less interest on the ISA account. In these cases, it might be better to use a standard or general account offered than using an ISA, as you can still take advantage of generous tax allowances. Essentially, what we're saying is the cost of using an ISA might be more expensive than the tax you save. Do we use an ISA? Yes and no, depending on what we are doing. There's a stupid rule that limits you to paying into just one ISA of each type per year. Because of this, we are forced into using both an ISA and a general account when we invest. For example, I use an ISA for my main investing account, but I also like to use other platforms simultaneously, such as Nutmeg, so I am forced to use general accounts in these occasions. We are both massive advocates of peer-to-peer -peer lending, and we practice what we preach by investing across multiple peer-to-peer -peer platforms to spread the risk. Due to the one ISA rule, 
we have no choice but to use general accounts. To figure out what you should do, we'll now look at all the investment taxes in turn. Dividend tax. People often worry about paying taxes on dividends, even when they only have invested small amounts, and they really don't need to. Everybody gets a £2,000 dividend allowance in the UK, meaning you need a relatively large portfolio outside of your ISA before you'll start paying tax. In fact, if you earn less than £2,000 in dividends, there's even no need to inform HMRC. Just sit back and enjoy it. Even after your allowance, dividends are taxed quite favourably. If there is any such thing as a favourable tax rate, you'll get taxed based on your tax band. And remember, if part of this income takes you into a higher tax band, only that element will be taxed in that bracket. At the time of making this video, here are the dividend tax rates. The basic rate at 7.5%, the higher rate at 32.5% and the additional rate at 38.1%. The basic tax rate is particularly low. By contrast, the basic income tax rate and national insurance for a job totals 32%. Another reason why investing beats working your ass off. If you take one thing away from this, it is that you don't need to worry about dividend tax if you only have a small amount invested. Capital gains tax. To keep things simple, in this video, we're only talking about capital gains on shares, funds and ETFs. Capital gains tax is another generous tax. Each year, you currently get a £12,000 allowance on capital gains before you pay any tax. Awesome. This allowance allows you to realise gains on a stock portfolio over time to avoid paying tax. You can also invest in your spouse's name to take advantage of their allowance too. But even if you go over your allowance, the rates are very friendly at 10% capital gains tax for a basic rate taxpayer or 20% capital gains tax for a higher rate taxpayer. Invest, get favourable tax rates, slave nine to five for an employer, get your pocket picked. Tax on interest. Interest is simply taxed at your income tax rate, but you do at first get a personal savings allowance as follows. Basic rate, £1,000. Higher rate, £500. Nothing at the additional rate. Personally, we think that these allowances are pretty stingy, but we used to get nothing, so we probably can't complain too much. It tends to be the less well off who hold money in cash, whereas wealthier people know better and have lots of investments that pay dividends, so we think that the personal allowance should be bigger to be fairer on the less well off. With a £1,000 personal allowance and today's terrible interest rates, you need quite a lot of money before you become liable for tax. However, it's not just bank savings that apply to your personal savings allowance. Crucially, investments that pay interest, such as funds, bonds, and peer-to-peer -peer lending, also count towards this allowance. You don't need much invested in peer-to-peer -peer lending before you will breach this personal savings allowance because the interest rates are so sweet. For the lower tax band, you would only need just over £15,000 invested, earning 6.5% before you reached the £1,000 allowance limit. After that point, if you don't take advantage of investing through an innovative financer, you will pay income tax rates at 20%, 40% and 45%. Should your interest on savings be over £10,000 in a tax year, you would need to file a self-assessment tax return. Other investment taxes. You cannot buy UK shares without paying 0.5% stamp duty. You don't pay this when you buy into an ETF or a fund, but the fund themselves have to pay it when they bought the underlying stock. However, something interesting happens with ETFs. To quote a Nutmeg article, when you buy an ETF from another investor, because you don't interact with the underlying assets, you don't pay stamp duty. Although you do pay a premium roughly equal to stamp duty to compensate the creator of the ETF for that cost. However, when you sell that ETF, you will likely recoup the value of the premium from the new buyer. We've saved the least frequently talked about tax to the end. And it's a nasty one known as the dividend withholding tax. Some countries deduct a percentage of a dividend when paid to overseas investors. The worst offender due to the market's importance is the US. They will initially deduct 30% of your dividend, but you can reduce this to 15% when you sign a form known as the WA Ben. But even 15% we think is too much. We've never seen any studies investigating the impact of this on UK investors, but at 15% we would expect this siphoning off of your money to really damage overall returns. Despite this, we still think that the US market is too important to ignore. Question of the day, has a fear of investment taxes prevented you from investing? Let us know in the comments below. Thanks for watching. On this channel, we talk a lot about personal finance, investing, and all things money. And if you want to see more great content, please click the subscribe button below. Businessmoneyunshackled.com. See you next time.